Tonight we take you to Jerez in Spain, the crowd pouring in 200,000, the civil guard out to control it, the traffic cops working overtime as this motorcycle mad country turn out to watch their 500cc Grand Prix. And this man heading perhaps for his fourth Grand Prix win of the season, a feat that has not been performed since Barry Sheen did it in the mid-70s. Hello and welcome, nice to have you company right around Australia. Well, Barry, this is a very special race for McDoohan. He can equal that record of yours on a circuit that's been altered slightly. Well, I hope he equals it. I hope he beats it. Yeah. yeah, it's been changed a little bit. There was a little sort of Mickey Mouse chicane in it, and they've taken that out. So we're used to sort of go right and left. There's a long right-hander and a bit more of a straight. Makes it uh, a nicer circuit, in my opinion. I must say that Alan Jones and uh, I sat here and watched the Formula One Grand Prix from uh, Spain last week. And, I mean, there were three, uh, three families there <laughs> with their barbecue pit. I mean, look at tonight. It's just packed. It's unbelievable. There's probably 200,000 odd people there uh, tonight. And, as you say, I counted the spectators last week, and there was, wasn't very many. Well, before we go to the race tonight, there has been a lot of speculation through the motorcycle media concerning just who has set up the racing Honda bikes this year. Wayne Gardner has claimed, claimed quite a lot of credit for the setting up of the bike, and of course Michael Doohan has had a little bit to say about that. So we had our man uh, over on the uh, other side of the world in Spain, Nick Harris from the BBC. He caught up with Mick Doohan during the practice sessions and asked the very question, who has set up the Honda bikes this year? Well, you know, I guess maybe people don't like to see the Honda win. Like, nobody says that when the Yamaha is doing so good. It's, you know, it's like what a super team the Yamaha team is. But when Honda get it right, it's, well, we just got the best bike. Well, you know, I guess you can't win, but it doesn't really bother me. I'm just out there trying to do the best job I can. You spent a long winter redeveloping the bike, didn't you? Wayne Gardner back home in Australia says he had a lot to do with the uh, redevelopment, but I, I think you put a lot of hard work in, didn't you? Well, yeah, I think I did as well. You know, I, I also did more riding than what Wayne did, and uh, the bike wasn't basically developed. On the off-season, it was developed all the way through last year. We didn't, at the end of the year, sit down and go, OK, what do we need? You know, it was developed throughout the season last year when we were trying to catch Wayne Rainey and we noticed what we needed. And uh, basically, um, you don't develop a bike around uh, somebody who's finishing fifth and sixth. And uh, basically, the first test we ever did in Australia, this engine happened to appear, so uh, what you tell me? I'm happy to be here in a res into Europe. It, it is a different atmosphere, isn't it? Well, it is, you know. It's good to be here in Europe, and um, I'm just I'm just uh, happy to be here and get, getting along with it. The, the surface here at a res is really good, and I think everyone's enjoying just being here. and just It's a little bit more relaxed. Everyone's got their motor homes, and you just come and go as you like. Well, there he is, the man, saying it himself, and I must say that that disappoints me to the fact that it's got down to uh, Wayne Gardner saying one thing and Mick Doohan coming out to answer it. I mean, they are a team, they're both Australians, and I would think that they're both in there trying to help each other do the best job they can, and as Mick said, that's all he can do. Oh, sure, you know, but uh, as Mick said, he rode the bike a lot last year, his input gave him his bike that he's riding. Alternatively, the input that Gardner gave has got the bike that he's ended up with, with the chassis is different to Mick's. With Daryl Beater, he didn't like um, Wayne's chassis, he liked Mick's chassis. So uh, it's six of one and a half a dozen of the other. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Well, let's hope that's cleared some of that up because it's been quite a controversy raging through uh, the motorcycling pricks. Right, let's have a look at the practice highlights. Of course, Michael Doohan has put himself on pole again. This is what's happened, a highlight session for you just to uh, catch right up to date before you go to race time. Michael Doohan started the session well, his Honda shaving one second of his previous best the day before. Doohan will start on pole, but is far from confident. I'll probably be disappointed if I don't win, but it's not going to be an easy race, I wouldn't think. I think like um, Swans and Rainey and Kaczynski and Chandler also could be also Eddie. There's a whole lot of guys who are fairly close, so it's not going to be an easy race, you know. I just got to try and get the best start I can and hopefully Hopefully just get out in front. Defending world champion Wayne Rainey has tyre trouble. The Yamaha rider says new tyres need to be fitted to his bike. No, you know, we're still uh, adjusting the bike, and trying to make it better for us. And, uh, you know, it's got to be a perfect lap. And uh, usually when you go fast, you don't want them to be perfect laps. You want them to be easy. So it could be better for sure. 
Doug Chandler Suzuki will start third on the grid. He says he's getting to know his bike. Of the others, American John Kaczynski, who will start eighth off the grid, is warning of a big performance, if he can stay on his bike. Well, there we are, the old grid positions. Mick Doohan, pole position. You see there, Mick is the only guy in the 145. Second is, second is Wayne Rainey. Third, Doug Chandler. Fourth, Kevin Schwantz. Second row of the grid, Neil McKenzie. Turn up for the books. He's really been going good. Eddie Lawson, at last, getting the Kajiva going. Alex Creville, who has to be the dark horse tonight. And it's good to see Kaczynski back. I believe they've changed it there, Daryl, because it looks like there's only um, four on the second row, four on the first row now. So different lineup. Okay, we'll take a quick break, and of course, we'll be back with the big race. Nice to have you company wherever you're watching this race right around Australia, and keep your fingers crossed for our super Aussie Michael Doohan. Can he create a little bit of history here in the motorcycling world of Australia? Right, pictures coming in now from Jerez. Let's take you out as we uh, look at Randy Mamola's bike, or well, the shot he's looking at from anyway. And they're on the lap going round to grid up now. Well, Barry, an interesting race, this one, no doubt. Does the circuit suit the Honda? Yeah, it does. Um, in actual fact, the circuit suits everybody. Um, nobody's been complaining about uh, the fact that it's bumpy or anything. They reckon the surface is really very, very good, ever so smooth. Where they've resurfaced it, it's nice. And uh, all in all, it's quite strange that nobody's moaning about it absolutely massive crowd that aerial shot you can see the spectator areas on the circuit here jam-packed yeah it's in spain motorcycling is just so popular it's incredible the uh, the big thing tonight is tires especially front tires because uh, jerez is very very hard on front tires and all the guys uh, including rainy have been moaning about it in actual fact at the press conference rainy said the yamaha at the moment was the worst bike he's ever ridden so uh, that's not much of a compliment is it Tazza? good to see the kajiva up the grid a little yeah it is you know they finally sort of get themselves sorted out and they always seem to be coming from behind and get it sorted out towards the end of the year Mc mckenzie a big performance with him 26 laps 4.423 kilometres around this circuit race distance, 114.998. Red flag still up. Yeah, McKenzie was third fastest in practice this morning, only just over a second slower than uh, Mick. So it's nice to see McKenzie going good. So just waiting now, bikes are gridded. Red flag will disappear. Watch for the green lights. The start so important these days. So much more traffic to get through to the full fields. That's great to see. Just about ready to race now. We're racing. Good start off the front row. Everybody got away very Mick. cleanly. Mick Doing. into the lead. That's Mick. Rainey. Schwantz looking up the inside there. Oh, Kaczynski well away as well. Kaczynski up in fourth place. Whole front row got off well and doing with a rocket start. Yeah, I think uh, you might see a, a, a good go tonight out of Chandler because he's been ever so quick in practice and uh, he's really been giving Kevin Schwantz the old hurry up and he's really pleased with the bike, so uh, watch out for Chandler. Arch rival sitting right behind him, the Californian, Wayne Rainey, current world champion, having a rotten run of luck of late, but sitting in second spot at the moment. Yeah, if you could say anybody's a dark horse tonight, it would have to be Schwantz because Schwantz goes really good at this place and uh, he hasn't had the best of luck or fortune, whatever you like to call it, and he's definitely out to make amends. He was saying that uh, the Suzuki feels the best here it's felt anywhere, in that in the middle of the corner it doesn't float all over the show, and it's not difficult to get traction with it, so uh, keep your eyes on uh, Kevin. Barrier full grid tonight, 31 bikes, that's healthy. Yeah, that's really good. Oh boy, who's this gone off there? Can't see the number. That's just one of the Peter Graves. He's one of the back markers in English guy. Really shouldn't be out there, actually. What lots of runoff areas that we're used to seeing around this circuit. It's probably as safe as you're going to get. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. somebody else off there. That's uh, 36. Arciero. Oh, yes. Nice little straight on. Oh, a, a double straight on there. I don't know what they did. Uh, Maybe new brake pads or something and forgot about new pads because when you have new pads, you grab the brakes and they don't work. Mick's pulling out a bit of a... You see Mick and Rainey there, they're pulling out uh, quite a neat little gap on the rest of them. And if Schwantz uh, wants to stay in the hunt, he's really going to have to turn the wick up a bit. Rainey sitting with doing like a drover's dog at the moment. Chandler sitting back in there too. Eddie Lawson's trying to make a move as well. 
Yeah, I just saw there the two uh, Sonoto Yamaha bikes of uh, Duhamel and Mackenzie. Mackenzie's been flying, yet all of a sudden, look, he's way, way back. They're the two bikes you see just coming into the shots uh, now, there. Yeah, that blue and distinctive pink colour. Look how nice the Honda looks these days. You see the big sort of cloud of dust mech going through there. How nice the Honda looks. It's sort of, it's very, very steady. It just gets a little bit sort of squirrely on acceleration. And all that is where the back end breaks away and it breaks traction and gets traction again. You see the back end of uh, the back wheeler mix bike there just coming off the ground and getting very light under heavy braking. Rainey made a bit of a faux car there, running a little bit wide. And you saw him, he lost uh, quite a bit of ground. He lost three or four bike lengths there. Yeah, it's one of those things you run in and you think uh, you're going to break really late. You saw there, as you say, three or four bike. Oh, dear me, who's this? Somebody that was a very lucky chap not to uh, throw it away on the, uh, on the dirt there. It's going, it's going good for Mick because he doesn't look as if he's really uh, setting the tyres on fire at the moment. And he said he's managed to pull that little gap. You're right, he looks great on the bike, doesn't he? The bike looks so set. Remember a, a year or two ago here, we were saying how the Honda had to use all of the circuit and then some, and it would have the hippie hippie shape, as we call yeah. it. And now it's complete reversal of roles because for Rainey to say the Yamaha is the worst bike he's ever ridden at the moment. This is on board shot from uh, Randy Mamela's Yamaha. It's coming down the main straight, past the start and finish into the first right hander. I just mentioned Peter Goddard, two good performances oh, from yeah. him and Jerez. Great from Goddard. Be nice, though. I was just looking to see if I could see him. I can't see him yet. Very distinctive leathers in yellow and white for Peter Goddard. But he's, uh, he's gone extremely well on the ROC Yamaha. Yeah, looking at uh, 1.2 seconds already, Mick was saying that uh, when you're following guys around here, because there's very little grass on the inside of the circuit, um, actual facts in the climate down that they have down in a res, you're lucky to get anything to grow. So where the guys have their knees in the dirt, it puts a load of dirt and dust on the circuit. So if you see little brown patches in places, it's just where the guys have kicked up the dust from the inside. Does look, you, you watch, just watch closely. See, it's just a nice little shake. That's nothing, you know, it's, uh, it looks really very, very good to Honda. No problems changing direction or all the aggravation they had last year is completely gone. Jerez famous for its sherry. Oh yeah, it's a great place. I used to go and race in international races down here and they were sponsored by Tio Pepe, which is the big sherry making people and uh, fabulous, great place to race and absolute total enthusiast, motorbike wise. Crowd is testimony to that. Giant crowd tonight watching the Australian Michael doing on the Honda, doing what he's done all year, win so far. Let's not put the mocker on him. But really, he's going for a little bit of history tonight. It would uh, put a tinge through you, I guess, because no. you've had a lot to do with his career. Oh, yeah. You know, I, do, I don't care about my records or whatever it is. I'd love to see him win tonight. I'd love to see him win all eight, you know, eight or nine in a row. It's uh, nobody would be more pleased than me. It's, uh, it's not an easy thing to do with the competition the way it is nowadays. Um, you could say, yes, OK, the luck's been going with him, but it's still been really, really very, very hard. He, he's been a little bit lucky in that Rainey fell down, that uh, Schwantz fell down or whatever, but um, he's been good because he's stayed upright and he hasn't looked like uh, parking it in the fence, and that's what it's all about. You have to sort of still keep it all together under pressure, and that's what he's doing. I must say when... Uh Mick was talking with Nick Harris. I think he made a good point. You know, everybody was very quick to point the finger at the Honda when it was going badly and wrapping the Yamaha for its performance in the Suzuki when they were strong. Now they tend to sort of say the Yamaha's not going so well rather than wrap the Honda. Well, I totally agree with Mick. The Honda is very, very good. It's Overall, it's certainly the best package. And the reason that it is is that Honda's learned their lesson last year in that uh, the, the first couple of races the bike was okay good enough to win grand prix and then they sat on their hands for the rest of the year and um all points to honda they've they realized their mistake and they're working hard at it all the time and it's uh, nice to see other teams playing catch up you can hear the crowd you can hear the crowd really getting behind mick doing enormous noise coming out as they came past that pack section 
Yeah, it's fantastic to race in Spain. It's, it has to be one of the, uh, the nicest, most enthusiastic. That's quite a big old uh, lead, um, the mix stretch out over Rainy and Rainy over Schwanz. It's funny, all the practice times were very, very close together. And uh, I would have laid money before the race. We would have had a real sort of nail bite with five or six guys um, close together. You hear, you hear the crowd grab it today. Fantastic atmosphere. What is it about Spain that makes the motorcycle so popular? Well, because they had um, so many good riders. They had uh, a guy called Angel Nieto that won 13 world championships. And in reality, he is the most successful motorcycle racer ever because Agostini won 15 world championships of which you could take Ace away from him and say that you could have your granny with a blindfold on could have won him because um, his bike was just so much faster, sort of 40 mile an hour faster than anybody else's. I'm not taking anything away from him as a rider, but Nieto, the Spaniard, was so popular in, in uh, Spain, and he did a lot for motorcycle racing in Spain. Then there was uh, Martinez, and it's just sort of gone on from there, Cito Pons. So the more good riders they have, um, the, the more popular the sport becomes. The same in Australia. Really. I was just about to say, Australia following that tradition. Look at Kevin Swans aboard the Suzuki. Disappointing season for him so far, running in third spot. Yeah, I always found with, uh, he says a big old lump, two and a half seconds, uh, Schwantz is behind Rainey. So you could virtually say goodbye to uh, Schwantz catching Rainey, unless um, the tyre situation comes into it. I don't know whether the, um, the Suzuki's and the Yamaha's and the Honda's, they're all on Michelin's, but I can't tell you whether they're running the same compounds or not. And so that's obviously very important. There's a bees thing though between uh, the two teammates of Suzuki here. Well, there really is, because uh, Kevin, that's Alex Creville there, 28. We probably get to see quite a lot of Alex Creville because he's the, the young, he's in fifth at the moment, the young uh, uh, um, Spanish star, and he's doing fantastically well. He came a right old gutser in practice on, a, one of the, on the new quick right-hander, but um, didn't hurt himself. He said the only thing that it affected was the fact that he lost sort of half the practice session um, getting getting band-aids on and straightening his bike out. It's, it's obviously hasn't affected him. It's nice to see Kaczynski back there. It's Kaczynski number four. And uh, he's going very well when you consider it's not the nicest of things having a skin graft and mucking up your fingers. It's very, very painful. And your hands really have to do a hell of a lot of work on a bike. That's an onboard shot from uh, Cavill's bike. If you listen. You hear that that's all those are the sort of varying in the note is just the acceleration and the tire spinning. Have a listen. Oh, that, that there was a little bit of a mistake where, where he came out and you didn't hear him wind the power on because he ran wide onto the outside white lines and you can't give. 170 odd horsepower, a big handful on the white paint, so he ran just a little bit wide, but uh, something that uh, most people do every lap, somewhere or another. Magnificent sound, these brutal machines. Yeah, it's intriguing, it always intrigues me to listen to the sound, because uh, to hear, to actually hear the wheels spinning, you can't, for anybody that rides a bike, would find it hard to believe that you can actually spin the wheels on them like you can on a dirt bike. Well, incidentally, talking about riding motorbikes, uh, little Sandro Gramini, the uh, 125 hero that won in Malaysia, didn't ride uh, tonight in Spain because he's got a broken leg, and of all things, he broke his leg on a road bike. So it just shows you. Everybody, even racers, have to be careful on the road. We'll bring you those results during this race of the 125s. Mick doing in full command so far. Long way to go yet, though. The bikey looks strong. Sure does. I can't believe how much Mick leans a bike over. You see a, a side shot of Mick. He's got that thing absolutely lying on its uh, on the lower cowling of the bike. And what they've done, they had to um, put a sort of a little spring-loaded, either a gear lever or a brake. I think it was the brake lever, because what he was doing, he was touching the brake lever on the ground, and they were worried that the... Uh, Look at that, three and a half seconds now leads for Rainy, uh, for Mick over Rainy.
Yeah, and they were worried that the uh, brake lever might catch a curb or just dig in going halfway around the corner and uh, throw you off. So the, he's the only one with a spring-loaded brake lever. It almost appears now that the pressure's off. He's been so dominant in each of the practice sessions and Grand Prix races so, so far this year that he almost looks like he's having fun these days. It does. It gets, you know, the more you win, the more, more sort of happy you become, the more confident you become. But then all of a sudden, it gets to you a bit, and then you get paranoid about getting beaten. It's quite a strange psychological thing. Wayne Rainey, the complete motorcycle racer. He is a racer's racer. He never gives in this fella. He'll wring its neck, even though he's not happy with the machine. He had a run for so long where he had the bike like uh, the Honda of Mick Doohan's. These days, it's not so good. He's uh, never been quite well since his first fall, but coming back and uh, coming back strong, but still no answer to the Honda and Mick Dillon. No, none at all. It's really interesting to, uh, you see the, the bike standing on the back wheel there. That's the kind of thing the Honda used to do last year. And uh, it's, uh, it's good for somebody else to have a bit of a hard time. I mean, in all, in all due respect, Hondas um, really have had a hard time over the past couple of years, probably through their own fault. But um, now Yamahas are having exactly the same thing. Maybe there was a little bit of complacency um, nipped in there somewhere. And maybe Hondas took them by surprise with their, their new engine. The fact they got the uh, frame sorted out last year. And um, it's taken them all by surprise. Gary, I must say we get a lot of mail from Western Australia. Big following for the 500cc bikes in Western Australia. A lot of people are tuning into the sport for the first time. And a general comment is, how can a, a team develop a bike and go backwards? Oh, it's quite easy. Uh, I'm just thinking of a good, uh, good analogy. Well, you could ask Jordan that in the Formula One, couldn't you? You know, it's just something that uh, you go off in a certain direction and you're convinced it's the right way. And then by the time you get to find out it's not, you've got an awful lot of catching up to do. It's just one of those things. You see McLaren... Um, are suffering from the same problems thinking that the Williams couldn't be that good but it is and in so many sports you know even um, athletics football and or whatever you know the people get so much success that maybe they get I'm not talking about um, rainy now I'm talking about maybe their team may become a little bit complacent that um, that they know the answers to all the questions and uh, it's, that's the good thing about any kind of sport you can never afford to sit back and relax look at the lead he's got and look at the lead right you couldn't even see the guys coming up behind raining quite amazing and this circuit when you look down from the air like that gee it's beautifully laid out isn't it? all those runoff areas it's uh, it's a wonderfully prepared circuit oh, it's sensational because uh, they put an awful lot of money into it so uh, it looks as if Creville is catching uh, Chandra and Schwantz and the old crowd will go absolutely bananas uh, if Creville gets past these two yeah they put a lot of money into the circuit they put a beautiful circuit uh, up near Barcelona um, so they have two of the best Grand Prix circuits around besides ours of course <laughs> well that's the view from Creville as he chases the two Suzuki's We'll be back straight after the break. Stay with us right around Australia. Welcome back after nine laps. Mick Doohan, Wayne Rainey, Kevin Swans, Doug Chandler, Alice Greville and John Kosinski. The top runners for you. This is where the interest is going to be, Daryl, because uh, Greville at 1.3 seconds now behind Chandler. And uh, he has been catching them hand over fist. Look, they're just in the frame there. So, <laughs> Greville... So impressive, Creville. You know, he hasn't he hasn't looked like he was on the ragged edge. He hasn't looked like he was riding over his head. And uh, we saw how close he stayed with Mick uh, in Malaysia. Oh, look, that, what that is, you, you saw the camera shaking there. Well, all that was was where the bike comes out of the corner, accelerates hard, and it shakes the handlebars. Now, have a listen to the power. The next, the next on board shot you get, if you look in the right hand corner, you see the rev counter and uh, how the, the engine stays right up the top of the rev range the whole time. See, nice and smooth, Creville. He's not, he's not on the ragged edge by any uh, stress of the imagination. 
And you can hear the crowd now urging him on. And Treville's had a su successful season so far. And this will be a big fella in his cap if he can uh, get past these two Suzuki's. Oh, it will. And I mean, it's fantastic for him, you know, because uh, I guess the guy that really does feel a little bit sickened in all this is Cito Pons, because Cito Pons was very much the hero in Spain and started to go really good on the 500, then had that crash in Yugoslavia and never ever did anything after. But Preville has done fantastically well. I mean, he's only 22 years old. Now we watch if you could get a hippie hippie shake coming out the corner. Really, it's, he's not a couple of laps. He'll be below. It's down to under a second now. Well, Barry, while we watch this chase, let's bring viewers up to date with the one, two, five results. There they are. Yeah, Ralph Waldman, Fausto Grassini, and that's uh, young Carlos Giro, the Spaniard that uh, crashed on the last lap uh, last week. So that's unbelievable. That Sakata fourth, Wakai, and uh, Debia. You have to say Waldman is definitely the uh, the clever guy in the one, two, five. Very, very consistent. Galvin was, Peter Galvin was 17. So that's not too bad a result. Good result. Now look at this. Get a load of this, Dazzle. Graville right on the tail of uh, Doug Chandler now. Oh, well, when he passes, I'll just shut up and you hear the crowd. Yeah. So, now it'd be interesting to watch the power of the Honda now. Oh, great shot. Look at the rev counter in the right-hand corner. See there, the Suzuki comes out just out the middle part of the corner, a little bit stronger engine-wise than the Honda there. But he's definitely giving old Chandler a hurry up. I don't know about that. Alex Cavilla's really got the speed up. up. The, on the brakes, look at that. That's a good, Now, that is a good ride. You know, that wasn't a case of out-squirting him. That was a case of really out-riding him. Now, what, have a look at this. This is from on board. Great. That was a good shot. That was, I like that. You hear the crowd in the background. For our one, two, five fans, too, we'll be talking to Ralph uh, Waldman after this event, after the podium uh, celebrations. We will have an interview, interview with the winner of the one, two, fives tonight, so hang around for that one. Boy, see how much Chandler dropped back from Creville since he got passed. There they are, the top eight for you. And Creville, a big interest now. This crowd pumped up. They've got him pumped up. And some great pitches coming out of the uh, Spanish Formula 500cc race tonight. Yeah. Oh, what a move. That is... Whoa! whoa How was about that then, Kevin says? Once is not yet. a load of that. That's... That's a really nice shot, wasn't it? That was really very, very good. Great stuff from Creville and Swans here. Real dogfight. Now, this will be interesting to, to see Creville, whether he can hold it all together mentally and physically. Because don't forget, he hasn't been racing the 500 too long. And getting towards the latter stages of the race, you get physically tired, but more especially, you get mentally tired. So, um, if he holds it all together and beats Swans, he... He deserves to be the hero of Spain. And not the easiest guy to pass, Kevin Swan. Oh. Well, we know he doesn't give up very easily. Look, oh, look at the back end of Mick's bite. So you saw Mick Dewan still out in front a long, long way in front of these two. But this is the battle now that's going on for third place. Alex Cavill taking on Kevin Swans. On board again. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, it looks as if uh, Swans has turned the old wick up a bit. So he didn't uh, reckon too much of Cavill going past. And he's, uh, he's going a lot harder now, so if Creville can stay with him, this is typical Schwantz pattern where he slows down and when he realises he can't sort of get away from anybody and then has another go towards the end of the race. With those knees just kissing the side of the circuit. Gee, they're great pictures, aren't they, tonight? Yeah, tremendous. But this is what you get, you see, where... You can bet your life the director's a mad motorbike fan and that, and that's, uh, that's what it's all about. Could well do him on the brakes here. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we know how big uh, Kevin Swanson's brakes yeah, are. Yeah, he can say that again. He's really... He's, oh, 
I thought maybe Creville could have got him on the change of direction, but pretty evenly matched, and it should be a very, very good race, this one. It's great to see that, uh, that all the top bikes are so close, closely matched, have both handling power, um, overall-wise, they're all pretty evenly matched. Now yeah, that Spain's jumping up and down now. He's pretty good there, Cravel. You see how much ground he made on Schwantz then. Schwantz keeps... Uh, oh, they're just lacking Mackenzie. That just shows you that Mackenzie's been flying in practice. In the warm-up, he was really quick and uh, obviously has some sort of problem because he's just been lacked. Down the start-finish straight again. Cravel comes back at Schwantz once more. Not this time round. Where he wants to... Uh, to really suss Schwantz, suss Schwantz out is the uh, last left-hander onto the start and finish straight. So, if all else fail, was a last desperate gasp there. And it would have to be a desperate one to get past Schwantz on the break. If you've just joined us, Mick Doohan, the Australian on the Honda, is out in front from Wayne Rainey. He's in second spot. Big gap between those two and a real big gap back to third place. The battle you're looking at now between Kevin Swantz and Alex Graville. And it's Mackenzie Chandler, Kaczynski, and Gariga now up in the top eight. I can't understand that because Mackenzie's staying up with this bunch. Mackenzie's in fifth place. All of a sudden appeared from nowhere. Well, <laughs> well that was it. I mustn't have had my eyes open then because um, to me, Mackenzie's just appeared out of nowhere. Just been eating away. I think we've been uh, looking at so many tight shots of uh, Swanson Graville that we really didn't notice Mackenzie. Yeah, well, in that case, Mackenzie's going to eat these two for breakfast because he's called up such a mammoth amount so quickly. Yeah, he'll definitely, no doubt whatsoever, Mackenzie will have these two. Because if you look at the distance, he was behind uh, Chandler, and then all of a sudden he's right up with the two of them. I'd... Mackenzie the flyer, this man the leader. And the coming into traffic, this could be dicey now for Michael Doohan. Mackenzie through. Oh, it's great. It's good to see Mackenzie go, to really get going. He's, he's had a new frame from uh, Yamaha's. Creville's not going to give it up that easy in front of his home crowd. And the crowd respond. Yeah, Mackenzie had some new bits from Yamaha. Mackenzie had another go. And... Um, he was trying to hold all the way through practice to get it sorted out. You saw there that was the, on change of direction, the front end of Creville's bike just came up in the air a bit there. Gee, the clarity of these onboard cameras now sensational, Bass. Uh, unbelievable. When you see how tiny they are, they're about the size of your thumb. Um, and the, the, whole, the whole issue only weighs under a kilo. Well, those donkeys years ago, <laughs> strap battery, but yes. Yes. No. Whoa. No, How close is that? Spots fighting back with everything he's got. Look at this. Closing right up behind him. Oh, often when you go into a corner, you're running, trying to get a run on the guy. You'll often, your shoulder will touch. The, you see the, the back end there where you see the two exhaust pipes come out. Your shoulder will often touch the guy's seat. Mackenzie just sitting there waiting. Yeah, he's going past. Yep, got Creville. Cool. That was a nice move, really Great. good move. This is the this is vintage Mackenzie. Oh, bikes moving away with a shot. Graville's not giving up either, but Mackenzie's still got his measure. Now he starts to attack Swans. Yeah, Mackenzie's really on the charge, no doubt about it. And looking at a uh, uh, straight, not quite. Looking at the way Mackenzie's bike's working, it's working much better than uh, than um, Rainey's bike because the way you can change direction on it and it doesn't get all out of shape and nasty, up the inside at the end of the straight. Yes, no. Swans hasn't had this pressure for a long time. <laughs> Talk about pressure with a capital P. Oh, yeah, great shot. <laughs> I have to have to tell you, sitting at home, it doesn't look anywhere near as bad. When you're actually sitting on the bike, you're looking at what you're doing. You're not actually, all we're doing is sitting, looking at the back of people's seats and that. But when you get that close, 
It's, uh, you don't even notice you're that close, actually. So it looks frightening, doesn't it? <laughs> so it like, appears out of your ear. How good is Mackenzie going? Oh, he's, he's on the boil, isn't yeah, he? Look at this. tremendous. Great. Tremendous ride. Now, Schwantz might get him on the run out of this because he went in. Yes, he did. Yeah. No, he's held it. Good man. Great ride from Mackenzie. Sensational. Well, Mackenzie's doing a Swans on Swans because that's his normal pattern. Now, have a look at this. See, Mackenzie up on the inside, but he went in very deep. Now, you see him run a little bit wide, and you see Schwantz keep a tight line. Now, you watch Mackenzie on the left hand side, so see him running wide. And uh, that gave Schwantz the time just to get up alongside him again. Graville just sitting there now waiting to pounce and have a go at Swans too. Because Swans has got to chase and protect. And in the meantime, just looking at the back there, it looks... Creville. Yeah, Creville up the inside. Yes, got him. Nice one. It looks in the background as if it was Kosinski. I'm not quite sure. It was, it looked, it was a red bike. I think it was Kosinski. Well, Swans has gone from third to fifth. He ain't going to give it up easy. This is really good. Is that, does that look like it looks, I'm sure it is Kaczynski. I think you're right. Well, may you get a shot here. Yes, I think you're pretty yeah. right. Yes, it is Kaczynski. So he's staying to close. Well, Michael Doohan way out yeah, in front. Is. Rainey McKenzie, Graville Swans, Swans Kaczynski, Gariga and Chandler. Poor old Dougie Chandler, he's been bumped right back to eight. Yeah, you see that could be um, choice of tyres, could be any one of a, a number of things. This is where the real race is, and the director doing the right thing, staying with the axe at the moment, because Mick Doohan out in front of Rainey, if you've just joined us, leading the Spanish Grand Prix. But the race between these three, Graville, McKenzie, and Swans, has been sensational. We've got to keep our eye on the gap between Schwantz and Kosinski, um, because by the looks of things, we could end up with a, like a four-cornered battle here, which would be tremendous. Have a look now. Is he catching? Yes, he yes, is. Yes, he is. He's catching them. Yeah, he's definitely is. Mick. Mick treading his way through the traffic. That's Michael Papa who just passed there. And let's hope they're all polite, because as we mentioned off the top of the show, 31 bikes on the grid tonight. That's great. Yeah, it's tremendous. I don't know what sort of lead Mick's got now, but I would imagine if he was pulling out at the same rate, it would have to be getting on for eight or nine seconds by now. You see the ground he's made on uh, Papa straight away. See, it's all together. It doesn't shake, doesn't wobble, doesn't do anything nasty. And I, I'm just trying to trying to work out if um, the best thing. This is absolutely. If only they could could get up with Rainey, the, um, the, Sch the schwantz Creville mob could get up with Rainey, then Mick couldn't ask for a better better thing than for Creville to finish second, because that would just stretch Mick's lead enormously. Or for that matter, Mackenzie. Yeah, or Mackenzie, anybody but uh, Chandler's, uh, Chandler's lying second now, and he's, uh, I think, 29 points behind Mick. So... You know, at the end of the day, Mick could uh, end up leading this by, by mass aren't that quick, but uh, by a long way. Yeah, it's a convincing when he did it in Japan, of course. He came to Eastern Creek. Gee, was, he's just been, and, and in wet or dry conditions, he's been the dominant force. So here we go. Mackenzie and Graville, Swanson, Kosinski tailing them up. We'll take a break, come back for the concluding section of a very exciting race for a third spot. Welcome back after 18 laps. Mick Doohan from Wayne Rainey, Noel McKenzie, Alex Graville, Kevin Swanson, Doug Chandler. They're the top players. 
Yeah, it looks as if Kaczynski's going to have his work cut out to catch these guys because he, he caught them up in a big rush, but he hasn't made, in the last two laps, he hasn't made any ground at all. Gravel hanging on to McKenzie, but McKenzie getting a little buffer now. And Creville getting a, a little distance too on Swans. Yeah, well, the way Mackenzie caught up, you know, I'm just sorry about it. Sorry about it, God, people. But I didn't see just he appeared out of nowhere as far as I was concerned. And uh, I guess I was too interested in what was going on with Creville and Schwantz. But you see, there, Creville is not he's not given up the ghost. Definitely not. You know, he's uh, he's still well within striking distance. And it'll be interesting. Uh, they're all on the same tyre, well, the same maker tyres. So um, if they've all chosen the same, roughly the same compound, you see there Kaczynski really hasn't made uh, too much ground at all. So if they're all on the same compounds, it just basically comes down to uh, um, racecraft and stamina. The man in second place, Wayne Rainey. Yeah, he's had a really, really lonely ride, as has Mick, really. Rainey's um, pretty safe pretty safe uh, second place. I haven't got the faintest idea what the gap is. Um, but looking in the background, that when you get a long shot, it looks, it has to be, I don't know, eight, nine, ten seconds or something. Rainey was all, always the bullet off the grid by G. McDoan starting so much better these days. Well, it's an I'll save you a lot of work, Daryl. If, uh, you know, if, you, if you're into the first corner for right, let's have a look. Rainey... Yeah, 13 seconds now, and uh, 13 seconds from Rainey to McKenzie. So Mick can afford to ease her back a little bit now. Or not, not especially ease it back, just when it comes to traffic, you don't have to take any unnecessary risks. You don't have to stick your elbow in someone's ear or anything. And it just gives you just that little bit easier time. 13 seconds lead on one of these machines, that's a horrendous lead, isn't it? Well, as far as I can remember, the, the win of mix in Japan in the rain was the biggest margin of a 500 for I don't know how long. 28 seconds. Yeah, enormous amount. You hear there, that's the back end of Rainey's bike spinning coming out that corner. The race has been extended to 28 laps. Yeah, that's Puffer packing up there. Yeah, well, they, were, they haven't actually extended it while the race is going on, by the way. They must have extended it just before, uh, say, an hour before the start, for some reason or another. It's on board again with Creville behind McKenzie. So he's uh, back in the hunt now, Creville. Yeah, gutsy, right? Geez, hung on, hasn't he? Yeah, you see the, see the shot of the sky there. That's just, yes. The Honda really just get, seems to get into its stride at the end of the straight. Maybe uh, Mackenzie's bike's geared a little bit differently to the Honda because the Honda really started to catch him then before they got on the brakes. And they got on the brakes and Mackenzie pulled away again. Yeah, Creville's going to have Mackenzie. Another half a lap. He's uh, definitely he's kept the pressure up and he's doing a great job. You know, as I keep coming back to this stamina thing, the only way to get sort of race stamina is to do a lot of races and Mackenzie's done an awful lot on the 500 as had Schwab so um, you've got to hand it to Creville he's doing a great job you can't believe in Spain now Darrell the amount of money oh look that baby up <laughs> you see all the back end of that thing go <laughs> whoa oh yes he shouldn't be worrying about where Schwantz is. He should just be concentrating on getting past McKenzie. Yeah, the amount of money that uh, Spanish companies... You see Schwantz now really getting on the pedal. And true to Schwantz's form, this stage of the race is when he'll turn the wick up. So we could really be in for some uh, good stuff in the closing stages. What have we got? Seven laps to go. Yeah, he, he really is a racist racer, isn't he, Spons? I mean, if he knows that the bike is right, he'll certainly have a big go. Well, he's, you know, he's got this far. It doesn't... You see the Suzuki shakes seven laps to the finish. Um, Suzuki shakes a little bit more than the other bikes, but Kevin reckons that he's a lot happier with it in the middle of the corner, has a lot more confidence in the front end of the bike. 
So it doesn't matter if it looks bad, as long as it feels rideable, that's the main thing, as long as you can feel confident in it. The healthy sign now that riders like Creville and Mackenzie coming through and, and, and starting to make their presence felt. Oh yeah, it's great because uh, no matter what sport it is, if you get a situation where uh, a couple of guys are just far and away in a class of their own, then um, it does get boring, but these, you know, there's no, no doubt that uh, Creville is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the future. And uh, it, it's nice, as you say, to see people coming on. When you think of Kevin Swans too, he's had his chances to win the championship on a Suzuki, but by G must be disappointed with the way that the bike has performed this year. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, you know, I keep saying... Oh, yes, ran wide there, left the door right open. Now, Creville should get a nice run out of this. Let's watch out of here. And uh, maybe coming back for a run out of this, and you will soon see. No. When you start to get a run in the corner, I show you where it is, where you can tell where the guy's going to pass. Now here's where you... That was where you would see the gap narrow just a little bit, and then that means that you're on the, on the power to get a run coming out of the corner. It's only a little bit of a run to watch. It's only sort of the guy gains six or eight inches, but then you know he's got the power on and he's, he's actually got the run. That's why some people say, well, how do you know when he's going to pass him at the end of the straight? It, it all happens at the previous corner, 9 case out of 10. I don't think he'll get Mackenzie there because that's where we saw Mackenzie's very good on the brakes into that right hand. The traffic will want to get out of the way of that trio. <laughs> that's it, you see, and if it's... Uh, if it's that close uh, when it comes up to the last, Dominic Saron, number 14. If it's that close when it goes into the last lap, if it's a sort of a blanket, it'll cover the whole lot of them. Um, then we can rely on Schwantz to put the big brakes on and go for it. McDoan doing well through the traffic. He's just threading his way, as Barry said. He can tend to, uh, well, he's got the luxury just to be able to ease off that fraction of a second to make his job that much easier. Well, yeah, sometimes, you see, you come up upon traffic when someone is a couple of seconds behind you and you go into a corner at completely the wrong angle that you want to go in at, but you have to go in like that just to stuff it up the inside of someone or alternatively, you run very, very wide and um, it's, you know, you, you have to do things that normally you wouldn't do. But it does, it's a real luxury having... That really big kid, that's, um, number eight, that's Rudroff, number 18. It's good they're having a look, though. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, it's as we've all said, you know, it's the same for everybody. So Mick's had a good run with the back markers this year. And this lot, really, he could afford to follow him around for a, a couple of laps, although he won't, you know, and uh, still not get him in too much trouble. Back with Creville yes. and Mackenzie. I can't see him out of the corner. Now watch Mackenzie at the end of this straight here. Yes. Got him. Now I think you might, maybe, Mac yeah, I was going to say Mackenzie. If he kept up his uh, score on the brakes, he's very good into that corner on the brakes, Mackenzie. Where, where Creville's really got to look, if it's this close for the last couple of laps, is the left-hander onto the start and finish. I think you'll find that's where Creville or do a band's eye effort on the, on the inside going into that. Goddard there, in seventh spot now, Peter oh, that's Goddard. Good. That's fantastic. Great. Well done, Peter Goddard on the ROC Yamaha in seventh spot, Gariga in eighth. They're the top players. But this battle's been intriguing. I mean, Creville must be getting frustrated. He's thrown everything at McKenzie so far. Now, here comes Swats again. As we oh. said, he never says die, this fella. <laughs> well, this is really going to be a good run at the end. When you think about Goddard, Goddard is the uh, top runner on the Dunlop tyres. He, he said he was testing a lot of tyres in practice, trying to find the right one. Well, it obviously paid off because uh, he's um, in front of Gariga, who knows this place like the back of his hand. <laughs> this crowd is going to get a good run, isn't it? Yeah. Back with Mick up front. 
Now, for that, for our little group we've been watching, the last three laps is when it's no holds bar. Everybody is flat traps as fast as they can go. From now on, these guys are going to be putting everything into it. So uh, it'd be interesting to see in the next lap if anybody, whoever gets up the front in the next lap, is going to be the guy that's probably going to win. Graville's yes. got him this Good time. One. Big move on the outside. He went up the inside before, changed tactics yeah. this time round. You see, and that was the corner where McKenzie was very quick into, so uh, he had a little bit more up his sleeve than his arm, didn't he? Look, that's good move. Nice, nice wide angle into it, you see. That gives you a nice smooth run in. You're not going to run wide. You're going to go out as far as you want to go out and have a very good run out of the next part of it. If he stays there in third spot, this crowd will go wild. Oh, go bananas. But McKenzie, he's been fighting all night. And Swans will fight. Oh, they're gonna, there's no doubt whatsoever that McKenzie's going to have a go somewhere. If McKenzie can can uh, stay close to Creville, coming on to the start and finish straight, then I reckon that McKenzie could get him at the end of the start and finish straight. But he's got to be very, very close to him. See all the big black lines in the circle there. It's like a it's like a car race. Michael Doohan has led from the, the start. Open up a gap on Wayne Rainey immediately, and has just stayed there. It's good. It, it really is absorbing stamina-wise, especially mental stamina. That is really what gets you when you're out on your own the whole race. Uh, the temperature's not too bad there, but. Uh, the fact that you're riding around on your own, you've got nothing to think about except the time that you've got over the guy behind you. But it's nice to three uh, laps to the finish. It's nice. Now that is where McKenzie could get uh, could get Creville uh, at the beginning of the last lap. And if he manages to get past there, then Creville's going to struggle. Well, Creville was third in Malaysia and has picked up the ball and run with it again tonight. This is a great ride. Tremendous, the first first ever Spanish guy to get on the uh, rostrum of 500 race. To do it at home is a better feeling. Wow, you saw McKenzie, McKenzie had the thing shaking left, shake. right and centre there. So Dylan Rainey, Creville, McKenzie, Swans, Kaczynski, Goddard still in seventh. Good on you, Peter Goddard. Big ride there ahead of Gariga. That's great from Goddard because he was in the points in the last race. He would have been even further up apart from the fact that... Uh, he had a bit of a, an aquaplaning expedition and ended up falling off, got back on and finished by ninth, I think. So the lap's winding down. The, the Spaniards hoping Graville could stay there. McKenzie just dropped back a little bit. Swan still in behind him. Kaczynski in behind this group, but back a little. Wayne Rainey second, of course, and Mick Dillon out in front. So this is the battle for third, and it's been a ripper. If Creville can hold it all together, you know, bearing in mind it's his home Grand Prix, first year on a 500, it's uh, a lot of uh, a lot to be on the shoulders of a 22-year-old. And uh, it's you know, okay, Daryl Beat is 21 and he finished finished third at Eastern Creek, but you would have to say that uh, Daryl would probably be more sort of uh, relaxed mentally than uh, Creville would be. Now you see. Um, Mackenzie's nowhere near close enough at the moment. Crowd responds. Two laps to the finish. So, Creville now hanging on for dear life for this third spot. Mackenzie, will he make the late charge? Can he bridge the gap? Swant sitting in behind him. We know what he'll do under brakes if he gets <laughs> half a chance. Well, yeah, that's it. You know, you could almost certainly say that if Schwantz is this far behind, he'll have Mackenzie because um mind you if mckenzie's latched back into the way he used to ride then he's a very very good rider mckenzie bit closer this time just watch watch the uh the back wheels of these guys when they go into the corner because everybody's oh mckenzie ran really wide there you watch the back wheels coming into the uh into a, a slowish corner at the back end of the bike he's going from side to side oh yes once i'm gonna go there 
where, where the back wheel's coming off the ground because you have the brakes on so hard that all it wants to do really is go head over heels. So you're bracing yourself on the handlebars and um, just trying to stop it, stop the back coming off the ground. Last lap. So Michael Doohan just holding it all together, one, two to go. And he'll take his fourth Grand Prix. Fantastic season so far, unbeaten. A feat that uh, was last uh, completed by Barry Sheen, sitting right here in the mid-70s. Wayne Rainey in second. And this battle for third, that's the intriguing one. But if anything, Creville, I think, has got yeah, enough. Yeah, it's got a little bit more than... Uh... <laughs> but all directors, but they're up in the box going, Charles Creville, no, we've got a show doing it, so long as <laughs> <laughs> Directors Oh, look at that, look, you know, sensational, but it's... Must be up to about 15 seconds now. Even more. Unbelievable performance by the Australian again tonight. Gee whiz, he's been dominant this season. And he just looks so relaxed, if that's possible, on one of these machines. But he looks so tidy. So good, he's riding around thinking, right, now keep it all together, Mick. Yes, <laughs> only a little bit. Oh, nice. No, he's not. He's just playing around there. You see the back end there, nice back end slide. This is a, a sort of a repeat of Eastern Creek, where you remember the last lap, he got a big sideways, but that was an on-purpose sideways. And that previous big slide there was a, an on-purpose job. So we should see a nice wheelie coming out the last uh, corner over the line. Funny way to have fun. Well, it is. It's all right. You, know, you get used to riding them, I and it doesn't feel, it doesn't, uh, feel difficult. So this lap winding down now for Michael Doohan. Very shortly to come That's across it. the line. Yay. Here he goes. The wheel goes up. Yeah, Mick Doohan it. takes his fourth Great. win of the season. The Spanish Grand Prix. The Australian totally dominant again tonight. Now, right now, let's have a look for Cravilla. Who was that? that could have been great. Rainey into second place. Oh, oh dear. That's somebody that, down. That has to be one of the like that. Was somebody really down. I would think. Very hard to pick from there. We're looking to see that group come through. This should be them now. There's one missing. Angus Creville. Creville's down. Can't believe Creville. He, uh, on the last yeah. lap, has dropped the bike. Here right it is. Watch, watch. Oh, that's up the inside of Mackenzie. Oh, he's lost the front ends. Yes, front ends gone already by the looks of it because it's going at a strange angle. Yes. What he did there, he came in hard on the brakes and just locked up the front ends and oh it's okay that's good now, this is what i was saying daz about keeping it all you know it's a very it's all very well to say oh silly chap you know fell off on the last lap but it's not that easy he's only young um he had the world on his shoulders it's easy for us to sit here and say well he should have just called it and gone for a third place or fourth place or whatever but um you saw in the accident that he came in hard on the brakes and just as he was hard on the brakes he started to turn in and just lost the front end well bad luck for alex creville in front of his home crowd with half a lap to go he was in third spot has dropped the bike michael Doohan taking the acknowledgement of this big crowd they've got behind him tonight too they cheat him all the way around we'll be back shortly with the presentation stay with us and don't forget we'll be talking to Baldwin as well Welcome back. Well, what a fantastic performance from Michael Doohan. You know, I mean, he's just been so, so dominant. That was absolutely fantastic because he rode the perfect race. If you look at it at the beginning when he was getting away, he wasn't getting it sideways, didn't look in any trouble at all. And then just sort of built on his lead, nice and easy. No worries, mate. Yeah, you can imagine him saying that. <laughs> oh, you can. Okay, well, let's go for the celebrations now because uh, the champagne is about to be popped. good for Mackenzie as well when you think about it because that he looks a bit cream cracker than he is oh, that's really the tired, best yeah. uh, the best ride Mackenzie's had for a long long time you look at Wayne Rainey's face these days he can see the championship slipping out of his grasp now I know that you've been into that position it must be heartbreaking stuff well it's one of those things you know because what you've got to think of when you take it off of someone someone took it off of them or he took it off of someone else and that's life you know you can't uh, Rainey's won the championship a couple of times. He's been generally reckoned to be the most complete rider 
uh, alongside Lawson. So, does Mick looks quite a happy chappy, doesn't he? He certainly does. Well, the celebrations will continue for the Australian camp, and there's plenty of them in that Honda team too, and uh, Michael Doohan. So, he has really created a little bit of history tonight by winning four Grand Prix now in succession. That's great because it's what you really have to appreciate. It's not easy, and the big, the difficult thing now is when he wins five. Then you get paranoid about yeah. the fact that you won five Grand Prix. You really nobody wants to lose, but it sort of plays on you a little bit. So in a way, it would be nice for him. I mean.